Hello and welcome to this week's Glass Tire Top 5. It is the week of November 29th, 2018. I'm Brandon Zeck and... Uh, I'm Henry G. Sanchez. We have a special guest in the studio today, in the office. Um, tell us uh, the shortest bio you can about yourself. You, uh, have, you do well, a lot of things. <laughs> well, I'm a native Houstonian, but I spent most of my adult life in New York uh, being an artist there, but I've just returned uh, two years ago and I started an art project here called uh, LOCA, Law Office Center for Citizenship and Art, and um, I'm working on uh, projects that would be collaborations with social justice groups and uh, working on some of my own sort of projects as well. So it's, uh, it's multidisciplinary. If you want to check that out, also we'll include a link in the top five post. Uh, we did an interview with Henry. Yeah, over a year ago with uh, Robert Boyd. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you want to learn a little more, we'll include that link. Check out the interview. We're so happy to have Henry here. Thanks. Number five this week is a show at Art Pace uh, by Borderland Collective called One to Another. Uh, Borderland Collective is uh, a group mainly of three, I believe, San Antonio artists. The show is going to be on view through December 30th. And uh, we were reading a little bit about the show. I have had the chance to see it, but we were reading about it, and it's, if anything, it's very timely. It is, especially what's with happening right now with this administration. Um, it's it's not your typical kind of art show. It's and it's not exactly a social practice uh, exhibition. It's more of a research as uh, as art practice. So what you what you're going to confront is actual information about some of the conditions of what's happening there at the border of, of Texas and Mexico. And at the same time, it's not a speculative uh, project, so it's very much raw. In addition to kind of the lifted videos and the photography and documentation and the interactive elements too, there's also a really beautiful takeaway. I believe Resograph printed a zine booklet that you can add pages to in the exhibition, and it kind of sums up all of this research you know, as, as much as a multi-page zine can sum up years of research. Number four on our list is the Kaneem Smith Show at the Galveston Art Center. We love Kaneem at Glass Tire. She's a Houston-based artist. Uh, she uh, has this solo show in Galveston. It's in the big space in the Galveston Art Center. Her work that we've kind of mentioned in the past, uh, a lot of wax, a lot of sculptural elements, and I think this new work kind of has a combination of pieces that she's made and of uh, some found objects. So it's a really nice blend between the two. You saw the show. Uh, I saw the show and I think that's, that's probably the strongest thing about the installation of her work is that there are some handmade objects that are made out of, of wax that look like femurs, human femurs as well as railroad ties and it's right across from an uh, a installation of cotton scales and which look like swords. They look like medieval sort of implements. The handmade wax sculptures and the found cotton scales seem to really work well together because they seem to have a, a, a similar sort of conversation. And I'd be remiss not to mention there are two other shows in Galveston also. So when you go see Kaneem show, also see a show by Renata Lucia and also a show of interactive, uh, an, an interactive video type piece by Lena Dibb. Number three this week is a show of works by Jackie Tylston uh, called Instructions for Disillusion at Holly Johnson Gallery. It's going to be on view through January 26th, so you kind of have some time to see it. The show, uh, it's new paintings. It's uh, paintings that are very, it, it, she's the type of painter that the works kind of look incomplete in a way, but it's a little bit about the sublime. Right, so what she does is she collages these sort of uh, accidental abstract uh, sort of uh, shapes and uh, spills, but she uses uh, sort of a, a hand-painted, hand-drawn in imagery that alludes to sort of like Asian tantric paintings or um, some sort of spiritual references, possibly Buddhist references. So it's, it's an interesting combination of work and it's actually quite beautiful from what I can see on, online. Mm -hmm. And even though I haven't seen them in person, Christina has, she recommended the show 
and you should go see it. Number two this week is a show at the El Paso Museum of Art by Julie Speed, the Marfa-based artist, uh, called East of the Sun and West of the Moon. This opened in November. Uh, it's on view through April 7th, so you definitely have some time. This show, uh, it's mostly new works, I think pieces that were created in the last five years. A lot of these pieces combine painting or drawing and collage, which, you know, I love Julie's paintings, I love her shadow boxes, I love everything she does, but I think her collage works are where she really shines, and this is a nice combination of everything. It is a beautiful show. There's also a site-specific installation in the museum that kind of recreates it's a lot Julie's of work. studio. It's yeah. a lot of work. She just works. I mean, what else is there to do in Marfa? Um, yeah. <laughs> Not only Julie Speed, but also Jorge Posada, who's the uh, Mexican uh, woodcut artist uh, who was making work during the beginning of the Mexican Revolution, as well as Jacob Lawrence and his first series of paintings on the Haitian Revolution. So it, what, what is really remarkable is this really good pairing of, of one, this early 20th century uh, graphic printmaker, as well as uh, mid-century artist Jacob Lawrence, who has his own sort of graphic sensibility. And now we have Julie Speed, who actually uses collage, uh, graphics. Kind of taking all of those elements yeah, and putting them together in yeah, a way. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing this show. I, I have to go out to El Paso. So number one on our list is Contesting Modernity and Formalism in Venezuela from 1955 to 1975. This show is a real discovery about what the kind of artwork that was actually done during a time that we normally associate with pop art and maybe with some early protest artwork. This goes against that sort of narrative and that sort of grain. What you see is a really dark visions of non-objective artwork that is really using the sort of materiality and the subjectivity to talk about the sort of political repressions that were happening in Venezuela and in South America in general. Um, I was really sort of taken aback by it. It took me a while to sort of uh, warm to the work. It left me a little cold, but what happened was is a day or two later, I started realizing that this was a, a body of work from a number of different artists that uh, really have really challenged the way we really think about art and dealing with protest, social conditions, and especially in the in a time that was fraught with uh, political repression. And if we really want to see something that challenges the sort of European uh, theoretical model of the way art history is written about, this is the show to go see. Go see some art. Go see some art. <laughs>